What's up, gamers? Rainy Potato here to tell you the best unlocks to get at the Altar of Hope and in what order you should spend your candles. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe. I post every day. The Altar of Hope is Darkest Dungeon 2's progression system, allowing you to unlock everything from new heroes, new hero subclasses, trinkets and other items, cosmetics, and various other buffs to make your runs easier, along with the brand new memory system. Let's start with your best early unlocks when you're on a new profile. When you start a new profile, you will first have to complete the prologue slash tutorial before you can start your first real run. You'll usually earn five candles in this prologue before being sent to the Altar of Hope for the first time. At this first visit, you'll only be able to use the Working Fields, which is a gotcha style item unlock system where you'll unlock random items from various categories. Each unlocked item will both be unlocked permanently to be found in runs, and you'll receive an immediate stack of said items for your next run. The four categories of items are trinkets, combat items, stagecoach items, and in items. For your first visit, I suggest going all in on in items in an attempt to unlock food other than slime mold so you can get a solid HP boost at each in. After food, I generally keep going on in items until I unlock items that boost affinity, shown by little gold diamond icons. Affinity is pretty tough to boost, especially early, without these items, so they'll usually provide the most impact for your run. Once you finish your first real run and have more candles, you generally want to take a balanced approach here for unlocks, getting just a few items of each type at a time, because remember, you'll start each run with your new unlocks and you don't want to clog your inventory or have new items you don't have room to equip. All right, you've just finished your first real run and hopefully you've accumulated a lot of candles, but maybe not. Either way, before your next run starts, you will end up at the Altar of Hope to continue doing your meta progression and you'll likely be overwhelmed if it's your first time. There's a pretty foolproof early order to unlocks that will both maximize your winning potential and make the runs more diverse and enjoyable. The first tab you'll want to head to is the Living City which contains the hero unlocks. Your first instinct will likely to be to unlock every hero immediately, but you likely won't have the candles for it, and it's not the best idea regardless. You want to slowly introduce new heroes and most importantly new hero paths if you want to go further in runs to get more candles and ultimately more wins. The top priorities for me are first unlocking a couple new heroes. Hallion and Jester are two of the strongest and easy to use heroes to add to your roster. Both of their first paths, Virtuoso and Ravager, are extremely powerful and should be unlocked early as well. Vestal is a consideration as well to give you another back row hero and healer, though she's pretty weak without unlocks and paths. You'll also want to get Surgeon Path for the Plague Doctor for additional HP and healing, which will make your runs much safer. Most of you will want to unlock the Flagellant too, since he's a new returning favorite. I suggest introducing a new hero or two each trip to the altar, along with a new path, to keep spicing up the crossroads without dumping all your currency here. I do not suggest unlocking the Bounty Hunter until late game. He's strong, but costs candles to use, and as a temp hire will be less effective than a full new hero in subclass. In the late game, once all heroes and pads are unlocked, I wouldn't bother with the signature in items until the very end, before cosmetics, since their impact is minimal for the most part. Next, you want to move on to the first tab, the Intrepid Coast. This tab has a variety of buffs to your run, along with pet unlocks, cosmetics, and the Infernal Flame. After you get your core hero unlocks, you'll first want to unlock the first pet in the companionship section, the Orphan Wolf Cub. This is one of the better, most consistent pets in the game, and for only five candles, it's one of the best values you can get. Experimenting with different pets is fun, but most aren't relevant until you get more item unlocks, so I generally save the rest for the mid to late candle game. The next priority is to beeline through the journey section. It will cost you 19 candles to get more inventory space, a stagecoach item slot, extra candles at locations, and a third wheel and armor token for your stagecoach. These last two are especially important to winning runs, as facing down urgent repair fights is an easy way to wipe even with a strong team. This section remains strong after these first unlocks, 
continuing to increase your inventory space and stagecoach item slots, along with candle accumulation. But it's more of a mid-game area, and I prioritize items and hero pads over the rest generally. The next tab is the resourcefulness section, which will grant you bonuses when arriving at a specific location. The first unlock for five candles is Clutch, offering you extra relics and baubles at N1. The rest of the rewards here are nice, especially more relics and baubles later as well, but again, not core unlocks on the level of item and hero unlocks. Let's discuss the Infernal Flame a bit. This is the difficulty setting for the game, making the game harder in exchange for extra candles. I will say as far as the candle rewards, it's not really worth the unlocks here. You'll get more candles by making your runs easier by further unlocking more stuff elsewhere. This is pretty much exclusively a late game candle dump for players looking for a real challenge, especially with how expensive the later Infernal Flame settings are. And you'll also find Stagecoach skins here. Of course, this should be your last stuff you unlock, though I can't stop you if you want your coach to look cooler for your multi-hour runs. The final tab of unlocks you'll find is the Timeless Wood, or the Memory System. How the Memory System works is once a hero has cleared an act boss, they are eligible for a memory that fits in the corresponding memory slot. Memories are usually minor stat boosts that exist for as long as that hero remains alive. A memoried hero will also retain their quirks and disease from run to run, making locking in positive quirks at the hospital far more impactful. It's important to note that if you selected a memoried hero at the crossroads, they must be alive after defeating the act boss to retain their memories. If they die at or before the boss, or if you surrender a run early, their memory will be wiped. There are five memory slots, each of which require you to defeat a separate act boss. There are achievements for reaching five memories on a single hero, so full five act, 15-ish hour challenge runs will exist in this game. Each memory costs candles, and by upgrading the timeless wood, you can expand your stock of memories to more impressive ones, while also lowering the cost of applying memories. Since these are in the end just minor temporary buffs, this acts exclusively as a late game candle dump, usually unlocked right before cosmetics alongside the Infernal Flame. Overall, the altar is a fun and engaging meta progression system, allowing a lot of freedom for players to personalize their experience as a player. But there are some upgrades that are better than others, and if you want to advance as fast as possible, spending your candles wisely for more impactful unlocks is the way to go. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every day. And join my Patreon or become a YouTube member for early access to my upcoming videos.